You are listening to ABLE Radio, simplifying productivity for small business owners everywhere. If you are looking for 1% improvements that add up to big results, this is the place for you. Every week, we learn about simple systems and tools that will help you build the business and life you've always wanted. Now here's your host, Zachary Sexton. My name is Zachary Sexton, and today I have with me once again, Productive Ninja, Matt Cowdroy. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Zach. It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to have you back on. Last time, we talked about how to be a productive ninja by building a second brain with the Cord model. It was a great episode, foundational episode. So if you go to ZacharySexton.com forward slash nine, you can get all those goodies there. And, uh, and that's why I had you back on, because I know you and I... We've, we've studied, we've researched the fundamentals, so rather than just me blabbering on uh, endlessly by myself, I, I figured out, hey, I'll have a, a fun Australian productivity dude to come on and, and talk about these subjects, and today is email. So we've talked about it a couple times on the podcast, number 15, I go through my system for processing, the, processing email, and uh, it's very similar to what you guys do at Think Productive, but but one thing we're going to even get more specific on is if you've got an overstuffed inbox. So I've, I've worked with clients that have had in the upper one, two, three, four, five figures. I don't know what's your, your record um, of emails in their inbox. And it can be overwhelming because there's, there's so much information there. There's, there's potentially important work. There's a lot of noise and un- unimportant work, but whatever it is, it is sapping your attention because you've got no sense of what's important and what's not when you're dealing with those kind of numbers. So getting to zero or at least getting it to a few hundred or maybe into the, the tens of emails is something that can be a big relief to a lot of people, and, um, and it's something that y- you've got some pretty good strategies for. Absolutely. The... I don't think I've seen a six-figure inbox personally. I've seen plenty of high figures. I've seen an 80, 87,000, I think, was one of the oh, biggest. Oh, you got me thought. beat. I, I think it was like a 74 for me. It was kind of recent. 74. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But you're absolutely <laughs> right. Email, email is one of the things that comes up for people as the thing that causes them the most stress. And alongside meetings, they're probably equal first, the thing that wastes the most amount of time in the workplace. So... It's quite hard to stop the incoming flow of emails that we're receiving, but there's definitely a lot of help we can give ourselves with dealing with our own inboxes. So, yeah, I look forward to sharing how to get to zero, how to get that inbox to zero. Yeah, I, I, like meetings take up time, right? But emails, they, they stress us out or they just take our attention at any time because you've got it on your phone, you've got it on your computer, they can give you notifications at any time. They're addictive. Um, they're, oh gosh, I just, I want to paint an awful picture of email, but <laughs> it's how we're connected. You reached out, you sent yeah. me an email and, uh, and, and we started a conversation that led us to getting on a few Skype calls. So, you know, it's still a great technology. It's just, a lot of how people use it. So if whatever bad habits got you to inbox 74 or 80, what was yours? 87? 87,000. 87,000. Not not mine personally, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody you've, you've witnessed an atrocity you've witnessed. Uh, Today we're, we're going to talk about how to, um, how to actually get that to a reasonable number. And what, uh, even, even at a ridiculous number, let's say 10,000 plus, how long do you expect this to take people? In a, in a workshop when I'm sort of pushing them along and giving them some extra motivation, we can get it done in just over an hour normally. Just I think if people are working through this at their own pace, it might take a couple of hours or even to split it up into maybe two one-hour sessions because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a mental game and it's quite tiring. So probably this process, the listeners could expect two by one-hour sessions, I would think, okay. if they're working through this on their own. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's I mean that's a worthwhile investment to keep keep this area uh, under control. So where do we start? Uh, so you you've got how, how would you start a workshop and um, how would you lay out the problem and, and the first step to the solution? So essentially, the problem is what you've already outlined. 
people have so many emails in their inbox that it's just it's causing stress because we can't choose the important ones from the not important ones, the the long term ones from the short term ones, the urgent ones. So the the problem I think is already established in that it's causing us stress. As soon as we find ourselves scrolling up and down the inbox, wondering what to do next or which email to choose next, we know that we're, we're in a state, we need some help. <laughs> so the, the problem is there. And one of the biggest, first yeah. and simplest tips is to turn off notifications. So you mentioned notifications. Yeah. So this is a little bit separate to getting to zero, but it's, it's important enough to mention is please turn off email notifications. They are just... They are just a distraction that we don't need. So, yeah, so let, let's get into the, the actual getting to zero process. Over to you. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I have a friend who, was, who came over for my birthday the other day, and he's like, oh, Zach, we had this trainer come in, and it made me think of you. He told me to turn off my notifications in email, and I did it on Friday. And I, it was great. I just had such a productive day. I was like... Man, you, you kind of forget productivity 101 where you're just like, you could have, I could have told you that, like, <laughs> just talk to one me. Of the, one of the pieces of resistance I get to people turning off their notifications is, what if I forget to check my emails? Do you actually think any of us will actually forget to look at our emails? I don't think so. We are so programmed and used to communicating via email. It would be like saying, what if I forget to look at my phone? To, to see if there's any voice messages or something. So we won't forget. Don't worry. We won't forget to look at our emails. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, okay. d turn off the notifications. That's just a little primer uh, because that's going to yeah. just have you, have you in there more times than you ought to be when you could be doing proactive, useful work. Um, yeah. The setup. What do we do? What do we do first? Okay. So setting up. So we need to set up our inbox so we're ready to get it to zero, or ready to hack it to zero. There are three folders that, are, that we'll be using as part of this process. So what happens is the inbox is where the email lands. It's simply a catch place for the email to land. And then we'll be moving those emails through this process to, to different places. There's three folders. One's called action, one's called read, and one's called waiting or waiting for. I just call it waiting. So. We set up three new folders under the inbox, put a little at sign at the start of them because if, if it's sorting alphabetically, they'll all go to the top of the list. So we've got at action, at read, at waiting. So they're the three folders and they're pretty straightforward what they mean. The action folder is where we move emails that have an action for us to follow up or an, an action for us to actually do. So we move emails from the inbox to there if there's an action. The reading folder, now this is great because this is where you put emails that you choose you want to read. Not just automatically filing all the junk in there, emails that you've seen and you've thought, yep, that's important to read. So, so like the email like I a, just sent you, right? You're like, oh, that's a great email, Zach. A little long. Let me put it in the read folder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like creating my own little magazine that I can pull up on the bus or the train and have a read. It's my own curated reading. So the reading folder is great. The waiting for folder or the waiting folder is for anything I've delegated or I'm waiting for someone else to do. So that's really a prompt for me to follow, potentially follow things up if, I'm, if I haven't got it back. Because if we just send emails and leave them in the sent folder and don't have a system for capturing that, that follow-up, we potentially just lose them. But also trying to remember all that in our head just is once again causing that stress and that overwhelm. So they're the three main folders, action, read and waiting. I'd suggest one more, which is circulars or newsletters. Now, this is another folder, and I know, Zach, you and I often debate things like this, and I, I love debating this because there's, there's always more than one way to do things. But I like having a circulars folder with a rule or a filter set up for the newsletters that you choose to subscribe to, and they can automatically go in there. It's different to the reading folder because the reading folder is something I've chosen to go back and read. The circulars is a little bit like a, a dumping ground for all those all those newsletters. I call it bacon. Bacon. It's not quite it's spam. Not spam. <laughs> it's not quite spam. It's bacon, yeah. So that, that's just a little add-on. That might have surprised you that I added in that little folder. But yeah, yeah. so that's that's the setup stage. Yeah. With the with the bacon, 
uh, which I would rather call it bacon, but <laughs> the uh, the <laughs> newsletters, the circulars. Uh, yeah. How do you set those filters up? Is that something you do automatically when you sign up for a new one, or do you have some sort of rule associated with that filter? Yeah, great question. So set, we set up our own rules in, if we're using Outlook, they're called rules. If we're using Gmail, they're called filters. Um, very simple. It's actually very simple to do in Outlook. You can right-click on an email, create rule, and it almost walks you through the settings are already there if you've right-clicked on the appropriate email. Gmail is a little bit more complex, but it's called a filter, and you set up a filter so that when the email comes into your inbox, it automatically gets moved, not copied, automatically gets moved to that bacon, bacon folder or the newsletter or circular folder. Perfect. Yeah. I like the Baconator. I, there's a tool that I use yeah. that, that's for my bacon it, called unroll.me. So I'll put that in the show yep. notes. It automatically um, takes all of your newsletters and puts it into a newspaper would be a way of thinking of it, it where seven, eight, nine, however many newsletters came in that day would be sent to you at one time. Um, and yep. So that's kind of a nice service. Another service, a little bit more tricky to use and a paid one uh, is called uh, SaneBox. can do similar things to set up that filtering automatically for you. You got to be careful with it. Otherwise, you're going to be the last person on the Southwest flight to check in because they, <laughs> they, got, they got me there. I was experimenting with it when, um, when, when people told me about the tool. I was like, oh, okay, I'll play around with that for a little bit. Uh, but setting up those filters manually it sounds like a great idea as well. Yeah. So that's the setup. And then it's actually time to get on with the work. So those folders will be used ongoing. This is our new email process. But if we've got thousands of emails in our inbox, we have to somehow, it's called hacking. So stage two is hacking. Stage one, setup. Stage two, hacking. We have to hack in big chunks our inbox to get rid of the stuff we no longer need. And it's simply by sorting through different methods. The first method I would use is sort by date and get rid of all the old emails. And it's up to you, depending on your storage requirements, your email you know, constraints. I normally say to people, get all the old emails and just move them to a folder called old emails or archive and get them out of the inbox. If you want to be more ruthless, delete them. Mm. But that's, uh, you know, that, that's debatable. So it's a matter of everything. It might be everything more than two months old or even one month old, depending on, on how you're feeling about that. I that was will just going to of... ask you what, what your dead on arrival like, is it three months or six months or two months or what? I suppose it would depend on the industry and the individual. I think if, if you're not deleting them and you're just moving them, I would say anything older than a month. You are just... ruthless. Ruthless you can ninja. find them. And this is the Ruthless Ninja. This is the thing. You can always find those emails again. They're easy to find in Outlook or Gmail. They're easy to find. So I would say get them out of the way. And then look at sorting by – now, when I mention sorting, it's easier in Outlook than Gmail. So did you want to make a comment about – the sorting yeah. or the searching e even process this, in Gmail. Even this archive by date a situation, I'll put yeah. a video in the show notes because it's not super intuitive how to do it. You have to use a, a very specific language in the search bar saying before, colon, I think it goes year, slash, month, slash, day. And then you will, you'll, you'll get all of those emails uh, by searching for it. And this is the by date if we're going to hack you know, yeah. everything older than a month. Uh, you would you just look okay as we're recording this it's August 21st so we would go back to July 21st before colon 2017 comma 21 comma uh, zero seven or seven and that's why I'm making the video because I don't remember yeah. exactly and you have to get it right <laughs> then yeah, it will then it will um, it will show you all the emails going back but Gmail has a has kind of a a way of showing you emails 50 at a time so you'll check yep. the box in the upper left hand corner and it'll check all 50 then there'll be all this little like url type thing that you could click that will then check all seventy four thousand emails yep. and then once you do that you can click archive and so you can still search for it you're not deleting it you're just archiving yep. it and uh, then a pop-up will come and i'm like are you sure you want to do that because this is a big bulk action and then you say yep. yes 
and then you actually have to wait a little bit because it doesn't happen immediately. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. two or three minutes is about, about what it takes for something that big. So if you if your inbox is just a few hundred, it should it should go all right. But that's the process. I'll I'll create a little video showing folks how that looks because it's not as intuitive. Same with the yeah. by by subject by sender. Um, I yeah. I read a tweet like a week ago that Gmail's going to get a little bit of a facelift or they're working towards that. So. That might happen sometime soon, but I'm talking about the web app right here, and and you're more familiar yeah. with the the corporate Outlook world, so that's yeah. great that we've got those yeah. perspectives. So the fact the fact that you're making that video is perfect. That'll be really helpful because it is it's not com it's not difficult, but it is complex. So that'll be great. So sorting by date, getting rid of all the old ones, and then looking at sorting by subject or sender. I normally start with sender or who it's from, and are there chunks of email that we can probably just delete? there's system generated emails, there's LinkedIn reminders, there will be all these things left, even in the last month, and we can just get rid of those. So sort by sender, sort by subject, which might show us some conversations where we can possibly delete old emails in that subject and keep the most recent. But once again, this is not so much about reducing the total number of emails in our email system, it's about cleaning up our inbox. So we can once again just move all these emails out of the way. And so we've We've done the setup and we're doing the hacking. Once we get down to maybe 100, 100 to 200 emails, I would say, we can start going through them one by one. And then this is the process where we use the three folders. So if there's an action for us to do and it's going to take longer than a couple of minutes, we move it to the action folder. And the reason I say if it's going to take longer than a couple of minutes is if it's a really quick thing, we just deal with it send the reply, send the information, say thank you, whatever it is, just deal with it on the spot. But if, if there's an action needed, it goes to the action folder. Something you choose to read, the reading folder. Something you just want to be reminded of, the waiting for folder. So they're the three areas, or you're just deleting. Now the other area to think about are our reference folders, below the three processing folders. I think, Zach, you have one, is that right? You have You don't have reference folders or filing below I, your... I have a separate system for my reference. Uh, so I send, right. I email things to my Evernote and, and that's kind of oh, yeah. how I, I take care of, uh, I take, take care of that. So, but, okay. but I'd be happy to, to hear about your system as if, if, in regards to how to get to zero for sure. Yeah. So essentially we need somewhere to file emails that we want to refer back to later, but we don't want too many reference folders. Probably no more than a screen. I know it, some people like to say I have one reference folder and everything goes in there. In reality, as I work with humans, <laughs> I know a lot of people don't want to stick to that. And I like to be realistic. So I say if you need a few, if you need a few reference folders, that's fine. But you will know when you've got too many because you'll start facing moments of uncertainty as to where should I file this or where did I file that? So limit your reference folders. Most people I work with have two or three screens worth of reference folders. Can you and give us some examples of some ones that you think are beneficial and then maybe a couple that you think are maybe a little superfluous? Yeah, so in my example, I have one called Think Productive General. That's where everything goes that is to do with the, the business. And I have Think Productive Clients. And that's where I put every email from a client that I, that I choose to keep. So... I'm splitting Think Productive in two there, and in a sense, I'm splitting out the client emails from the general business emails. So that's useful. Another time a reference folder is useful is if you're working on a specific short-term project and there's a lot of emails backwards and forwards and you just want to track that one project for a, a period of time. So that, you, once again, you don't want to end up with 20 folders for 20 different projects. But if there's something specific, a wedding or a... <laughs> a Christmas party or just something that you're trying to manage in one place. I know there are other methods for managing projects, but sometimes a reference folder that comes and goes might be okay for that. So that that's the reference folder. And and I just scenario. was re rereading the book too, the how to how to be a productivity ninja, and I like the the example is that you want some big buckets, not tiny cups. Yeah. So if you're trying to throw yeah, your emails into all these little tiny cups, well, it it 
you have to think about it a little bit more. It's more difficult to do. It'll slow you down in the long run. Or if you're just wadding things and throwing them in a bucket, it's not as difficult to do. And another difference here with, when it comes to Outlook and, uh, and Gmail is Gmail uses labels. And you can actually yep. have more than one label per email. And you can, you can even have an email in the inbox and it be in multiple labels. They do kind of look like folders, though. So I, it's still the nomenclature to me. It's like, yeah, it's kind of in a folder. Um, so yeah. that's just a, a tiny difference. But you're at this point, you're, you're looking at, at and processing one by one, right? Yep. Yep. So we're, we've done the setup. We've done the hacking. And we're now processing one by one. So we're getting there. And we just need to take a breath at this point. Like, ah, like this is this is hard work. Even for people listening to the podcast and not doing the work yet, I think it's all even my head's starting to think, oh, this is and this is the moment in the workshop where I say, have a break, everyone. <laughs> like, get up, have a stretch, because it's getting heavy. Okay. But it's okay. Don't stress. We're not losing emails, we're not deleting emails, we're just sorting out. Where most people end up after this process is with between 30 and 60 emails in the action folder. And that's from thousands. So people that start with 500 or, or 50,000 emails, they end up with about 30, 40, 50 emails in the action folder. And that is a lot more manageable than looking at that overstuffed inbox. And it's, it causes a lot of relief. I see people feel, I like to say people look 10 years younger because that, that inspires the older generations. That inspires them anyway. But <laughs> when the inbox is zero, people suddenly look 10 years younger. They look more relaxed and more at peace. So, and people might not have n- even know process. that that's possible. Like it's, uh, you can see it. You can get to the end of it. Um, yeah. And it's, so, okay, so we've gotten to zero and, and I, like you and I and, and, and a lot of the people you've interacted with have felt that, that sense of relief when it comes to not having however many emails were in the inbox. But what's the point? Like, why we can, we can talk further about how to, how to actually process um, your action and your reading and your waiting for um, going forward and how to maybe prevent this from happening. But why, why is it that, that at least you think that working from a zeroed inbox, that is an inbox or an email inbox that um, that on a regular basis, maybe not daily, but but potentially up to weekly or biweekly, you actually have zero emails in your inbox. The point is the the mental clarity that <clears throat> excuse me, the mental clarity that you get from having having that inbox at zero. Like it, some people do see it as a little bit fanatical, but it's, it's, it's true, the mental clarity and you've just sorted out all the mess. The way I like to think of it is we don't get a lot of physical mail these days or snail mail, but I like to think of if we were getting our snail mail and we were getting brochures and bills and things from the tax office, and important things, not important things, local newspapers, free magazines, and it was all just sitting near the front door in a pile. And some things we were opening and some things we weren't and we're throwing it back on and we just keep growing this pile of, of paper mail. That's what the inbox is like when it's not sorted out. And it, it just causes stress. We really can't think clearly. We can't think about our next actions. We can't focus. And it just causes, the amount of stress is just, yeah, it, it's unbelievable that I see it daily, the amount of stress this causes people. And what do you think is at the core of that stress? Being the feeling of not being on top of things, the feeling of being worried that someone's about to call you or tap you on the shoulder and ask, not so much ask, have you seen my email? Because that's quite common. People do that after five minutes <laughs> but <clears throat> in the corporate world. But ask, why haven't you responded? Have you sent me, why haven't you, have you sent me that information yet? And it might be from an email three days ago, a week ago. And pe- that's what people are just most worried mm. about. They're missing things. Yeah. So if, if, if they're working in large organizations, they're obviously worried that they're letting down their teammates. Or if they're self-employed or entrepreneurs working in their own business, they're also worried that they're just missing, missing opportunities. 
they may have been invited to speak on a podcast and they forgot to get back to the person. So they missed missed the opportunity. That or, didn't happen with you, like Matt. I would, yeah. You're too busy giving workshops yeah. to come on. <laughs> uh, that, that, I think that's a good answer. And I, I really like how you pulled the, uh, the analogy of digital email, electronic mail to actual mail, which is something that we're, we, we still experience, uh, but, but not as, yeah. integrative degree is like you wouldn't take a envelope out of your mailbox open it up kind of read it and then stuff it back in there i mean that would be insane but people do that with their <laughs> their email all the time they open it up they read it okay and then just click it down open it up read it again okay that's that's yeah. still kind of the same information i read so it's just a, a huge waste of uh of attention and energy and also you you at the top you were talking about scrolling up and scrolling down and scrolling up you know looking yeah. for the the next best action and it's really hard to find when it's mixed up in in with with your bacon and with your uh um messages that have are completely not work related or, or articles that you'd be fascinated to read or sales that you'd be interested in taking advantage of so um yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's that control, I think, when when it comes down to it. So, Zach, there's one more rule that I'd just like to mention. We mentioned rules and filters to help automatically sort the, sort the mess out from our inbox. Especially in the corporate world, there's a huge problem with people using the CC area of emails. So people are drowning in emails because they're being CC'd. And we also need to take some responsibility for this ourselves because... One of the little phrases I like that we use is, you get the email you deserve. <laughs> and it's almost putting the, it's putting the onus back on the sender. So if I send an email CCing five people, I'm creating this email traffic that will come back to me. But there's a, there's a rule or a filter we can set up to manage all those CC emails. And there's, there's options you can choose. I like to get all the CC'd emails and move them automatically to a folder. So have, have the system move them. Some people just like to change the color of them. So they stay in the inbox, but instead of being black, they can be gray. So it helps them just know which emails have actually been sent to them. So they're the ones they really need to deal with and which they've been CC'd on. I like that the reason I like rule. to move, yeah, the color rule is good, but it does, it's, still, it's still mess in the inbox. They're different colors and it's almost more mess, but some people like it because the other side of this argument is a lot of people aren't using the CC area really for what it's for. People are CCing people when there might be actions for them in the email. So this is debatable, however. I like the idea of moving all those CC'd emails to a separate folder and then reading them. You still have to read them or look at them, but maybe once or twice a day, and they're just not in the inbox constantly causing noise. So that's just another, another thought to, to deal with email traffic. To circle back a little bit to the hacking before we get to how to actually get those staging folders to where they need to be long term, we, mm. we talked about date uh, longer than a month, but we actually didn't dive into the subject and the sender. Do you have some common examples of subjects that might be hacked as well as, as senders? So when you sort by subject, you'll, you'll see groups. Um, I don't really have a specific example of a specific subject that might come up. But the point is when you actually sort by subject, there'll be groups. So you can deal with groups of emails together. And that's the whole point of the hacking process, dealing with emails in groups. Did you have something in mind there? Or? No, no, no. I was just yeah. actually, by sender I can see like, okay, I'm going to look yeah. for LinkedIn ones. Um, and I'm going to archive all those. And, and actually, something I would do right then is maybe go into my LinkedIn settings and change my email subscription settings so that doesn't happen in the future. Subject, I, I can imagine probably a couple situations. I just didn't know if you had some good examples top of mind. No, and this will be harder in Gmail than Outlook because in Outlook you can just click sort by subject and you can, you can see the groupings, whereas in Gmail you need to search more uh, I the see. Subjects. That's so why. Yeah, that's it, where the disconnect yeah. came for me. Is because it's so, not. It's not as natural in, in, in Google. It's, it's okay. not as natural in Gmail. Yeah. Okay. But in Outlook, it's it's very useful. All right. All right. So we've we've done the setup. We've created the action read waiting for folders. We've hacked by date, subject if you're an Outlook person, and sender to just really get wide swaths, uh, and really that big ones. 
the dates is going to be huge. Like you're going to you're going to yeah. go from 74 to uh, like a thousand, you know, maybe <laughs> if you're if you're lucky. Um, yeah. And then you start to take that what's left over from the that massacre you just had in your inbox and one by one say, uh, is this actionable? If it is, throw it into action. If it takes less than two minutes, you just go ahead and respond to that email really quickly or pay that bill or whatever thing's going to be really quick. Uh, if it's something that you choose to read, you could put it in the read folder. And um, and if it's something, an email you may be sent out requesting something or maybe something's going to be shipped to you, you throw it in the waiting for folder. And uh, and we could talk, there's uh, little extra folders that we talked about too. But we're basically, yep. we're dealing with these three staging folders right now. Uh, we went from, you know, let's say 74,000 to, uh, to 100. And maybe we have yep. like, 60 action, 30 reads, and 10 waiting for us. What happens next? I mean, definitely give yourself a high five, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look in the mirror. See if you're 10 years younger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Check, yeah. check yourself out. See, <laughs> see if that aging process worked for you. <laughs> yeah. But what to do now is it, it's, we need to do the work. And this is the, like, we've done the work of getting to zero, but now we need to do the work of, dealing with those emails because it, it's a form of communication and we need to be getting back to people. The, the beautiful thing about having especially the action folder there is we have a measurement of how much work we need to do in our emails. So if I look in my action folder and there's 10 emails, I feel fairly calm that I'm, I'm pretty up to date and I can easily see with those 10 emails which ones are older. But, but if that action folder gets beyond about 30, I start getting quite worried that I need to put some time aside and this is the key thing. We need to put aside a chunk of time to just work on those emails. And we are working on our emails, working on our communication, getting back to people, trying to clear that action folder. So however people choose to plan their day, and that's a topic of many other productivity-related sessions that we can talk about, how to plan your day, how to plan your week. But essentially putting aside some time, maybe doing a Pomodoro technique, which I know you've talked about before, giving yourself 25 minutes or half an hour as focused, I'm clearing out my action folder time. Um, and if you're using Outlook, you can turn it offline. So look for the work offline button under the send receive menu. You can work offline, which means you can be clearing out your action folder, working on your action folder, and then no more emails are coming into the inbox to distract you and disturb you. So that's a good process as well. And the reading folder, that's up to you in terms of time frame. To me, it's great for the bus. When I'm going to the city here in Sydney, it's about 45 minutes on the bus. So it's a great time for me to not do what's in my inbox and not do what's in the action folder because I'm not set up to deal with that effectively. But to read and just read those emails and then clear them out. So because I've chosen that's what they're for. Waiting for, once again, we need a cycle, possibly a daily cycle at the start of the day or the end of the day check that folder. There'll be things that we've got now, so we're not waiting for them anymore. So just delete or move those emails, delete or archive and just keep that, keep that system up to date. So that's, that is where we have to do the work as well. One of the criticisms of this method is everything that's in those folders is a little out of, out of sight, out of mind. And some people do struggle with that. That action folder has 30 emails in there. And then they just go back to their old habit of dealing with what's coming into the inbox every every three minutes. And this is really, just, it's a process and a system. And like with any system, if you only do half of it, it will fall apart. So if you choose to do this process, it's a matter of having something to prompt you or remind you to get into those processing folders and do the work. So that that's probably the important bit there. Yeah, maybe early on set some calendar appointments to uh, yep. say action only. Yeah, 25 minutes, yeah. set that timer, get it going. Th that is, I, I've experienced that before. I, I think actually um, after reading the book, I gave uh, I gave those folders a, another go. And I, I typically, I, I take all the actions that are longer than two to three minutes and, and move them out into my own task manager. I know you're a Wonderlist guy. I, I like Trello. Um, and, yep. and I trust that I will go there. And that, But that's kind of the thing where it, it's very easy 
whether you put you leave it in a folder, you put it into a to-do list manager, you you write it on a sticky note, um, you, you you write it on the back of your hand. Uh, it doesn't matter if if you don't have the the habit of going back and looking and seeing what needs to be done and then doing the work in the order that makes the most sense you, you're not you're you're just as as well you know have a 74,000 <laughs> as yeah. as having those those 60 nicely laid out emails because you're not actually doing that proactive actionable work yeah and the thing i would like to say is it's worth it it's really worth the effort and it's amazing how much you can do in, in one hour or two hours if you look up this process, work out how to do it and put the time aside without distraction and get on with it. it it's, it's possible and it makes a huge difference. So, yeah. Um, should I mention our online course now, Zach? So uplifting. Yes. It's ah, worth it. Yes. And if this conversation free, <laughs> wasn't enough... We're gonna. Mm. We got a visual. Uh, uh, you tell us. Tell us about it. I'm really excited about this. Thanks for offering yeah. it. Yeah. So for the listeners of this podcast, we now have a Productivity Ninja Academy through Think Productive, which is an online e-learning. So this is a free offer. This is not a trap. This is not a sales pitch. If if you email me, um, and Zach will include my email address in the in the show notes. If you email me, I will add you to our academy. And I'll give you free access to our Inbox to Zero e-course, which has videos and will step you through this process. If you need to email me, it's matt at thinkproductive.com.au, but Zach will put that in the, in the show notes anyway. Email me just in the subject, Productivity Ninja Academy is all you need to say, and I'll add you in. And it's, it'll, it'll help you. Yeah. Matt, is the, is the training agnostic to what email client use or would it be better for people with Outlook or better with pe people for Gmail or does it not matter? It doesn't matter because it's more about setting up the folders. It's more about the process than the technical thinking. aspect. All right. Yeah. Well, so there, I'm, I'm think in there we've also got the handout from the workshop which does give more technical training. If people contact me and you'll include my email address there, I'm happy to, to sh help them in any way I can because – I, I love this stuff. I love helping people with email. It's the easiest mountain to tackle when it comes to personal productivity. So, um, yeah, feel free to get in touch, everybody. Um, I'm in Australia, but it doesn't matter. We can – that's the nice thing email about email. Email still gets they're, there, right? They're, they're time it, takes yeah. it takes a little while. It takes a little while. But it, it, does it, take gets, a little while. it gets yeah. over there. <laughs> Yeah. No, it doesn't. And because my inbox is not overflowing, I'll I will see your email. Yeah, so, he'll, yeah. he'll put it right in the action folder and maybe even take care of it right then. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. Awesome, Matt. Did you want to give another book and tool? Because you've already been on once, but you can you can have a second one if you have one top of mind. Otherwise, we can uh, we can just call it a call it a wrap right now. I think I I think I have to mention this book as one that did change my life. Even though I find the ideas a little far fetched sometimes and a little hard to implement, but I have to say Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. It, it, it's a bit far-fetched for me, but it got me in a mindset that really had me make some changes in my life. So, yeah. And the tool, I go back to Wonderlist. Now, Wonderlist is going to have some changes soon because Microsoft is transitioning it to Microsoft To Do. But I'm still using Wonderlist, and at the moment, I, to me, it's still a beautiful tool that keeps my second brain under control. All That's right. it, Zach. Thank you. We'll, we'll get people whose brains look like yours into Wonderlist before uh, Microsoft <laughs> eats them. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for coming on once again. Look forward to diving into more productivity fundamentals. We should just call this the fundamental series because that's, that's what they are. Excellent. Thanks, Zach. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope this, hope this session is useful for everyone listening. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Matt Cowdroy, for coming on and sharing your email expertise, especially with Outlook, not something I'm as familiar with. Something I am a little bit more familiar with, actually intimately familiar with, is an application called Trello. I would like to invite everyone listening to head over to ZacharySexton.com forward slash 
Trello-training if they want to learn how to control their work a little bit better in that wonderful visual application. So if you go to ZacharySexton.com forward slash Trello training, we'll be talking about how you can set up a system you'll actually use that's not overly complicated, uh, but still shows you how to pull in the right work at the right time. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I'm repeating my thank yous. I'll see you next Productive Wednesday.